G'day guys, today I'm going to take you through my review of the Grid Connect system of smart home appliances. Uh, I'm assuming that if you've looked up this video, you've got at least a basic idea of what they are because you've probably seen them at Bunnings. Um, but in short, they are Wi Fi controlled smart home devices. Um, they are cloud controlled for their scenes and automations, which it uses, but the devices can also be directly app controlled. Uh, just up on the screen, some of the devices that I use in my apartment. So I have 38 um, devices, which range from plugs to switches to PowerPoints to downlights. Um, and to start with, my overall experience of these has been relatively positive. I have had some um, minor -ish issues, um, including a couple of devices that had to be um, reconfigured, but in the vast um, for the vast majority of times it's been a relatively positive experience now this is in contrary to what i've seen when i've looked up reviews and when i did my research on the systems um, and for a large part the reviews on these things aren't great um, and i put a lot of this down to that you can't be i guess a basic user of this you have to have an intermediate to advanced technical level of knowledge to use them um, because if you're not there's a couple of issues you're going to run into with them so taking you through the pros and cons from my experience the first one is that they are easily and readily available so you can pop down to any Bunnings and get these things which is good it means that returns or warranty stuff is not going to be an issue for you unlike potentially things you order off eBay or online. Uh, the cons, for me, the biggest one is that it's cloud-based controlled, um, which means if you lose internet, um, your automation stop working. So for me, for example, um, all of my switches control downlights via automations. Uh, so without internet, those automations stop working because the devices can't talk to the cloud-based server. Um, and to give a, I guess, an example of that, a little while ago, I lost um, power, oh, sorry, lost um, internet, still had power, um, went to turn on the bedroom light, it wouldn't turn on, I couldn't find my phone, um, and was therefore muddling in the dark because I couldn't turn my lights on. Um, moving on for that, the next problem with it is it requires a robust 2.4 giga, um, gigahertz network. And the right, reason I say this is a con is um, Wi-Fi networks obviously can have congestion. And I'll talk about this one in a bit more detail in a second. But to me, this can be a bit of a con if you don't have a robust network. Uh, next, it has what I would class as limited automations. Um, and has no ability to program it outside of that without taking it off the Grid Connect system onto something like Home Assistant, which I'll talk about later as well. And lastly, it requires an electrician to install most of the components. Now, this is something to be more aware of than anything else, and I want to make sure you're aware for switches, for the switches and PowerPoints, any switch or any PowerPoint requires an electrician to install them, but it is something that you must be aware of when you're looking at this system. So to talk a bit more in detail about the Wi-Fi networks, what you see up on the screen at the moment is um, the environment scan of um, my, from my apartment at the moment. And as you can see, 5.5 5 gigahertz is pretty good, um, which is what I do most, put most of my data stuffs over. But when it comes to 2.4, the 2.4 networks here are extremely congested. Uh, and this, will cause problems for you if you're using a, the standard um, switch router Wi-Fi setup that comes, for example, with your um, your internet stuff. So one of the things that you need to do as part of this is actually put some thought into your Wi-Fi infrastructure. So I have two Ubiquiti access points. Uh, so for me, I have no problems with Wi-Fi despite it being congested, but if you don't have a strong um, Wi-Fi setup, you will have issues. And further to this, like because on my two access points are located opposite ends of the apartment and it is a small apartment, when I have um, packet losses or transmission errors, I literally can just switch the devices onto which access point they're working. 
Um, the next thing to, to take into consideration, and this is one you should discuss with your electrician when you're looking at installing the points for your downlights, is if you're using um, the grid connect switches or indeed probably any smart switch as well, look at having two points installed for each of your downlights. One which is controlled by the switch and one which is permanently on. The reason for this is if you're looking at controlling downlights with automations, they need to have power to them all the time. So that's why you have the always on line. The second line, and to give, I guess, to break that down and give a bit more of an example. So I have an infrared sensor, it's a Hue one, but I'll talk about why later too. Um, the, at night time, we'll turn the, the hallway light on to the minimum amount of light at the moment so that I don't trip over myself. To do that, I require these always on lines. The switch lines though, if your apartment or house or whatever, you plan on renting it out, you wanna have your switches working as standard switches and you want the ability for this, the, these things to operate without having to require internet connection or other things because otherwise you're gonna basically be 24 hour tech support potentially for your tenants. Um, so this is something to consider, discuss it with your electrician when you're getting your setup uh, installed, but this is how I recommend doing it, or at least considering. The next one is Home Assistant. So all of my um, devices now have been set up onto Home Assistant. Now ignore the dashboard screen. I don't normally can control my Home Assistant system from the dashboard. I do it by switches uh, or Google Home. But, um, what is important to note with this one is by putting it onto Home Assistant, and I run mine off a Raspberry Pi 4 that sits in my network box, um, I've removed the requirement to use the um, cloud-based system. So the Home Assistant server talks directly to all of these devices, so there is no delay. Um, and if I lose internet, I still have the ability to control everything. And you might not be able to hear, but my bathroom fan just turned on. Um, and as you can see, there is no delay for any of these things. The lights instantly turn on and off um, and they're controlled directly to it. So if you're thinking about getting Grid Connect, give a little bit of thought to whether um, you put it onto Home Assistant. The next couple of days, a tutorial on how to set up the Home Assistant um, links for um, to your direct will be put up but it is definitely worth considering because it removes one of the um, biggest drawbacks for me of this system. That being said, the fact that you have to take these um, devices off its native system onto a more advanced system to get what I would deem to be the functionality that you would expect straight off is a fairly significant drawback and con for me, which is why I talked about it earlier. Um, so I've got three big recommendations if you're going to seriously think about installing these things. The first one is look at and consider um, installing your downlights with two lines and two points to each of them. One which is switched and one which is always on. Um, that way, if you rent it out, you can set up your system so you don't require any of the automations for things to work. The second one is consider having a dedicated 2.4 network for the lights or at least put some thought into um, making sure that your net Wi-Fi network is robust because that in itself will get rid of a bunch of the problems that I've read about other people having for this system. And last one, a big one, transition your lights and transition all these devices onto Home Assistant because you'll find that on the Home Assistant system, the automations will be better um, and you'll have uh, remove the cloud requirements um, and you'll remove lag from it. You'll also get better integration. So for example, the sensors that I use are not Grid Connect. I use um, Hue sensors. So I have motion sensors that are Hue uh, and a bunch of other different sensors. By having Home Assistant, you can have different systems talk to each other and control each other with different automations. So this is one of my biggest recommendations, but Unfortunately, to do this, your technical knowledge needs to be a little bit higher. So in all, my overall rating for this is uh, three Kangas. So it's not a bad system. In fact, 
I like it. Um, and if you have a higher degree of technical knowledge, I can recommend it to you. If you don't, um, then you may have some issues with it. So for example, one of the issues like when it is when it comes to things like the Wi-Fi, if your Wi-Fi is set up so it's a dual 2.45 uh, gigahertz system, then you'll have issues um, registering your lights and it won't like it. You need to set that network SSID to pure 2.4. Now, that then means that if you're only running one Wi-Fi network inside your place, um, all of your divorce devices are going to be running at the slower speeds that you can get with 2.4, which is not a good thing. So you need to put some consideration into the Wi-Fi networks that you run. Um, so overall, like I said, this requires a little bit higher degree of technical know-how to get the most out of this system. Anyway, I really hope guys that this has been uh, useful. If it is, please like and subscribe. I'll be putting together a tutorial on how to um, set this up using Home Assistant soon. That should be up in a couple of days. Um, and you can do that because all these things work as to your devices. Um, and I'll be putting up some other tutorials. But if you have any um, specific things you want to see with this system, including things, if you want some help with how to set it up, if you're having issues, happy to make those things, throw a comment below and I'll get onto that as I can. But otherwise, have yourselves a great day.